Let's say that these are your lungs. This is your right lung, and this is your left lung. I'm just gonna label them upper, and this will be lower, and this will be the middle lobe. And you're minding your own business, and somebody coughs, and they get TB in your lungs. So that TB gets inhaled, you breathe it in, and the location that the TB likes to go to is actually a pretty uh, interesting thing, is it likes to go along these fissures that I'm drawing out here. So these are the fissures. They separate the lobes of the lung, right? They're kind of like the boundaries. And so they like, the TB bacteria, they like to go near those fissures. And they also actually like to go subplural. Plural uh, kind of indicates the outside layer of the lung. So if it's sub, it's right underneath that outside layer. So they like to go somewhere along the fissure and somewhere in the subplural space, kind of right on the edge. So they're gonna jump into some alveoli. Let me just draw it out for you here. And you know you've got millions of these guys, so I'm gonna draw out a few more just to make it really clear that you know, these things are in packs. And what's gonna happen is that, of course, you're gonna have an immune response right away to this uh, bacterium that's in there. So you might have a macrophage coming along like that. And this macrophage is gonna pick up the bacteria that's now landed inside of that air sac, and it's gonna take a journey through the tissue of the lung, and it's gonna go and drain down to a local lymph node. So this is a local lymph node, kind of a neighborhood lymph node. Let me label it right here, lymph node. So that's the journey that the macrophage is gonna make. Not every single one, but some of them are gonna to go to the lymph node. And what they do by doing that is they actually carry with them the mycobacterium, right? So this little bacterium is now carried along, going for the ride, and now the bacteria is in two spots. It's in the original spot where it landed in the lungs, but it's also in the lymph node because it got carried there by the macrophage. And I should have mentioned this earlier, but let's assume that this is your primary infection. In other words, this is the first time that this person, or I guess it could be you or me, is breathing in the TB bacteria. So what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be a reaction. The mycobacterium and the uh, macrophages are gonna start warring, they're gonna fight. And you're gonna get this entire area turn into literally like a battlefield with dead mycobacterium and some dead macrophages. So some of your own cells are gonna be part of this, but a lot of it is just gonna be the uh, bacteria, right? And you're gonna get some of this battlefield going on over here as well in this lymph node. So that's what it's gonna turn into, giant battlefield. And if you look under a microscope, it actually looks like what we, what we call it a granuloma. That's the description that a, a pathologist might use for, for what we're actually uh, describing here. And same thing is true for the lymph node. There's a little granuloma in there as well. If you were to peek inside of this granuloma, let's just actually kind of erase the center out. If you were to peek inside, or let's say I was to cut it open, what you would see is inside of this granuloma is literally like this mess, this goo, that somebody at some point thought looked like cheese. And I'm not sure how they came up with that conclusion, but it kind of stuck. And so we call this caseous necrosis. And caseous literally refers to cheese. And this is the same kind of cheese that might go on your crackers. So cheese, and you can think of it almost like cheesy death, I guess. Cheesy death for the necrosis part. I think I added an extra E there by accident, but let me just uh, fix that with a little hyphen. So cheesy death. And because I'm naming things, let me go ahead and give you a couple more names. Gone focus, what the heck does that mean? Gone focus, actually named after uh, Dr. Gone. But gone focus is what we call this thing. So it's termed a granuloma, and specifically here, because this granuloma, which is the more broad term, is in the subplural space, we said, and it's close to a fissure, and we suspect it's from TB, we would call it a gone focus, actually. That's the other name for it. And both of these, if you were to try to name both of these together, the lymph node that has a granuloma and the gone focus together make up what we call the gone complex. Gone complex. So that just refers to both of the areas of disease. So this is how disease starts. But what happens after time passes? Let me actually just slide this over a little bit. If we then take a little bit of passage of time, and let's say there are three options, right? Time has passed. What are the different possibilities? Well, let me actually go through and talk about mycobacterium 
mycobacterium tuberculosis from the standpoint of the bug what is going on and actually I just noticed I have in the past made the mistake of using a capital T but it should be a lowercase t so mycobacterium tuberculosis three options one option is that the bacteria may be dead you may have killed it with your macrophages another option is that the bacterium is dormant it's just kind of lying in wait and a third option is that it's multiplying like crazy. It's actually going and dividing and dividing and dividing. And the last one actually is going to look, if you looked on a chest x-ray, like this. You see lots of disease. This red indicates diseased tissue, not normal tissue. And you might even see some large diseased lymph nodes. So that's what it would look like on a chest x-ray. And these other two on a chest x-ray basically would look normal. So if you were to look on a chest x-ray, this is what the three options would look like. The first two would look normal, and the third one would look like, uh, like something is wrong. And actually, this is helpful because, remember, these two together, we call these, both situations, we call them latent TB infection. Remember, we can't really easily distinguish the two because in both situations, you've had prior exposure to TB, and in both situations, the x-ray looks normal. But if you had some super ability to actually zoom in, let's say you could look under a microscope, you would notice one key difference between these two. And this is not something you can see on a chest x-ray, but you could see only kind of uh, if you had amazing vision. You could look down at the microscopic level at somebody's lungs. You'd see macrophages. And in the top case where there are dead bacteria, the macrophages would look healthy and happy. And in the case where you have dormant bacteria, you would actually see some bacteria there, some red live bacteria. So that's the key difference between these two situations. But again, both of them we call latent TB infection. And this scenario at the bottom is going to be called progressive because things are slowly but surely getting worse. You can see more disease on the chest x-ray. Primary, with a 1 and a degree sign, infection. This is the name for this, progressive primary infection. So it sounds a lot like what we had named out here with primary infection, but the word progressive tells us that things are actually getting worse. The disease is getting more nasty. Now, let's actually play out the rest of this. Let's think about what will happen with the dormant situation. I wrote out, or drew this out earlier. And let's say more time is passing, of course. Maybe years have gone by. Uh, this person has had live bacteria in their lungs for years and years. Uh, nothing has happened. And now they have what we call reactivation. And maybe it's because their immune system is not working properly, or maybe they have another disease. Who knows why? But all of a sudden, now the bacteria, the TB bacteria, are going to come out with a vengeance. And there's going to be a cavity that forms, usually in the upper lobes, a cavity that forms up here. And it's going to be packed full of TB bacteria. So this person, you can imagine, if they cough, they're going to be coughing out lots and lots of these little bacteria that I'm drawing. And around that area, there's a lot of disease. So a lot of disease in this area, and it's very, very distinct. So if you see cavities and you see lots and lots of disease, you're really going to be worried that this person might have what we call progressive, progressive, secondary infection. And the reason I'm saying secondary is because, again, this is happening separate from that primary infection. This is happening sometimes years later. Another way you can actually have this happen is through what we call secondary infection. So maybe you actually literally get more TB. Maybe you're on a bus or a boat and a second person decides to cough and TB gets into your lungs through breathing it in. That's another way to actually get progressive secondary infection. So you can also think this is reinfection because you basically got reinfected with the same bug, right? So the thing that ties reactivation together with reinfection is that in both situations, your immune system has at some point in the past been exposed to TB. And we think that that's the main reason why you see these cavities and you see so much disease. That's a really horrible infection to get. So thinking about this a little bit more broadly then, both the progressive primary infection and the progressive secondary infection, who are the folks that you'd be most worried getting these diseases? Well, 
I always worry about HIV patients before any other group because we know that HIV and TB is a really, really bad combination. They're at high risk for getting progressive disease. Both primary, which is at the time they got the first infection with TB, or secondary, which could be years later.